Do you remember that era of the 2010s in semi-early YouTube days when Bacon was like a very, very popular memed thing for some reason with like Epic Meal Time and a bunch of other cooking channels making recipes with just a ton of bacon and then talking about how much you love bacon being the funniest thing you could ever think of to put on a t-shirt. Yeah, well, Jack fell victim to that too. And in order to celebrate his 50th episode, he decided to make something he called the Bacon explosion, which I can already guess he's going to start off the video by talking about, oh my god, you guys all know how good bacon is and blah 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 blah. So let's just take a watch. Also, I'd love it if you subscribed. We're trying to reach 500 subs for the channel's fifth anniversary in April, and we're almost there. There we go. There's that classic Jack intro we know and I guess love. Love is in, it's so stupid it's funny. Hey, how you doing? Jack Scalfani here and you're cooking with Jack on my 50th episode. Can you believe it? 50 of these bad boys. Now that he mentions that it's his 50th episode, I don't even know how many episodes he's done up until this point and quite honestly, I'm too scared to count. So we're going to celebrate by doing the bacon explosion, all right? Bacon explosion's easy. I give courtesy to uh, barbecueaddicts.com. They're the ones who came up with this. Okay, so again, using somebody else's recipe. Surprisingly, the Barbecue Addicts website is still online. It has a link to buy the bacon explosion? But if you click on the link, it just takes you to a shop that has some rubs and t-shirts. Now, really quick, just to tell you how easy this is. You got two pounds of bacon. You got two pounds of... Italian sausage. I picked up three just in case I didn't have enough. You can never have enough sausage, right? Barbecue sauce and seasoning. It's going to be delicious. And of course, since he needs barbecue sauce and seasoning, he's going to use the best barbecue sauce you'll ever taste. Because he's Jack. Why would he not plug his own product? Jack, I am begging you from the bottom of my heart. If you have any of these sauces or rubs left in deep storage, even if there are spiders crawling inside the containers, send me one, please. We'll show you that in a moment, but first I just want to thank a few people, all right? I've got uh, a picture of uh, Crip, my buddy Chris sent me a picture of his poutine, and there it is, and it looks delicious. Uh, obviously, he did it right with the white cheese and the gravy. And look how beautiful Kevin's vegetarian lasagna looks. Good sir, what have you done to lasagna? So here's what we're going to do. I want to talk about some upcoming episodes. This book, a few of you wrote me and told me to get this book. Some guy named Todd Wilbur and Top Secret Recipes Unlocked, okay? I glanced at it and I thought, yeah, right, uh-huh. I guess he sold it on QVC. And what he does is he takes uh, restaurant food and he clones it. He shows you how to make it at home. So in an upcoming ep episode, we're going to examine this book. And I'm writing that down as a mental note to keep in mind for a possible future episode. I'm going to try one or two of Todd Wilbur's recipes and see if they really taste like the original. We're going to put them side by side. So I'm going to, you know, maybe make some Burger King onion rings and with the dip, spicy dip. And then we're going to bring in Burger King onion rings and the spicy dip. Uh, make a Starbucks uh, lemon cake and then bring in the Starbucks lemon cake. We're going to put them side by side and take a look at them. Okay, I get it, Jack. Please just... <sighs> it's going to be a great episode. Also, for a lot of you guys, I'm going to do a... Uh, I, think, I think next week, I'm doing a Valentine's dinner episode. I'm going to show you how to make an easy, romantic dinner and how to do it right. There are a lot of do's and don'ts when you're making dinner for your lady. Okay. <sighs> because if there's one person I think of when I think of romance, it is Jack Scalfani. But right now, let's bring you in close and show you how to do the bacon explosion. Please don't bring me in close. The first thing you do is take your thick cut bacon. Now, the bacon I bought is smoked applewood bacon. You can get regular thick cut. Uh, I got the smoke flavor in the bacon, okay? And you're going to do a 5x5 five five grid. Now, once again, I've never done this before, so bear with me. 
Oh boy, we get to see Jack attempt to do a bacon weave. Over, under. There we go. All right. And then you just kind of just smash it down. All right, Jack. Honestly, that's a decent bacon weave. That's one point for you going to your negative 9,999 score. So, hey, now you're up to 9998. Any wins a win, I guess. All right, so there's your first layer right there of weaved bacon. You can take a little seasoning, your favorite seasoning. I'm using the best gourmet seasoning you'll ever taste. However heavy you like it. I want to do a little black pepper. Yeah. You can do whatever you want at this stage. That is not a little black pepper. I put a lot of black pepper on things. That is too much for bacon that already has stuff on it and is smoked. And just to kick it up a little bit, just give it a little heat with some red pepper, crushed red pepper. I always forget that Jack's kitchen is like in his laundry room because you can see a basket of clothes and then I don't know if that's the dishwasher, but there's also appliances in the back. All right, next thing we're going to do is add a layer of pork sausage. Let's do this. I'm going to put it on here. And I'm just going to spread it with my hands until I get about halfway. This is about one pound's worth, so... That can't possibly be how they expected you to apply the sausage layer, Jack. At least go wash your hands. I'm sure he did not do that at this point, nor is he going to before coming in contact with other parts of the recipe or even objects around him in his kitchen. Okay, now you're going to take this bacon and you're going to cook it. Whatever's left of your two pounds of bacon. You're going to cook this bacon in a pan and you're going to chop it up in the bite-sized bits like that. So I'm going to crisp mine up. If you don't like it crispy, cook it however you like bacon, okay? Because that's what's going to be our next layer. So as far as I can tell, this is just the early 2010s bastardized beef wellington with instead of pastry, you've got bacon. Instead of the mushroom duck cell, you've got Italian sausage. And instead of the beef, it's more bacon. So let's throw this in the pan right now. We'll bring it back all cooked up. You guys know how to cook bacon, right? Oh, it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to have to check after this and see if Epic Mealtime ever did something like this. Because if they didn't, they were missing out on a money-making episode here. It was their whole shtick. Now it's time to add another layer of flavor. So, I'm going to grab my best barbecue sauce you'll ever taste. Oh, thank God. I thought he was going to put more black pepper. And it says to just put some sauce, kind of drizzle it. Yeah. God, I want to try that sauce. Please. Okay, now at this point, they also recommend that you put seasoning on this. But my barbecue sauce has a lot of seasoning. At this point, you want to season, put more salt, put more pepper, put more garlic, onion, whatever you want. Put more salt. You didn't put salt on it, Jack. I'm sure there's some salt in the best gourmet seasoning you'll ever taste. It's got to be mixed in with other stuff like onion powder and garlic powder, because I mean, let's be honest, that's probably all it is. Now, here's the hardest part. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm going to carefully try to roll this. Oh, I can't wait to see him try to roll this up. But I can get it to come away from the bacon. So take your time. You got to start over. Put the sausage back down and start over. Let's see if we can get this to roll. I've obviously never made anything like this before in my life, but if I had to roll that up, I probably would have used the aluminum foil underneath it as a sort of impromptu sushi mat. I don't know. Maybe Jack did it the best possible way you can do it. There you go. That basically it. And then I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to take a chance and lift this whole thing up for a quick second. Up and down. And you can see that there was bacon stuck to the bottom of that. When he lifted it up, there had to be a better way to roll it up. Couldn't he have just taken the other side of the bacon weave and wrapped that over the... <laughs> 
Why do I question what he does? There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's never going to be any logic behind anything that Jack does. So why do I make these suggestions of things to do differently? Because he's not even thinking about a logical way to do this. He's just doing it. Cross your fingers. Never done this before. So bear with me, okay? You've never done this before, Jack? I never would have guessed. Check that out. That's a trip. Look at that. It works. All things considered, that looks decent. Now, before I take this out on the grill, I'm going to take you with me, okay? Why is it so blurry? What, is he using my camera all of a sudden? But remember, you're going to smoke this, okay? And I'm going to show you how to smoke. If you have a smoker, you already know how to smoke. But I'm going to show you in a minute how to do it on a gas grill, okay? You're going to smoke this at 225 degrees. It needs a center core temperature. If you have one of those temperature things you can poke in there, all right? One of those temperature things. You know. A thermometer. It's going to take about two and a half hours. So if you don't have a temperature gauge, cook this bad boy at 225 for two and a half hours. You can even do it in the oven if you want. Well, this definitely isn't a lazy man's recipe if it's taking him two and a half hours. But I'm going to smoke this on my gas grill and I'll show you how. So let's go outside right now and put this on the grill and we'll season up even more. Okay, so here's the lazy man's way. Ready? I spoke too soon about the lazy man thing. Whatever. <laughs> you take a pan with water and some wood chips. Put them in there. See how it's smoking right now? I want to capture that. Now the question is, Jack, are those smoking wood chips? Like, made for a smoker or did he just go to home depot and buy a pack of wood chips that you'd find at your local kindergarten's playground because there's a pretty big difference there and i'm not sure if jack would know the difference all right you got two flames over here heating this up smoking it this side there's no flames so when you get on the barbecue don't use the side with flames to put your meat on you smoke your chips on this side if you have a gas grill. I'm sure you can tell just by looking at it, but that is not going to smoke the meat. It is going to steam the meat, and it might infuse some of that woody flavor that you want when you're smoking with wood chips. More than likely, it's not going to be as potent as it would if you just smoked it, because since you put it in water, a good majority of that vapor that's coming off of the pan is just that water evaporating rather than smoke coming from the wood chips. Leave one half without a flame. This is where the meat's going to go. It's 225 degrees in here right now. Okay, I got the chips smoking. Let's put the meat on. Like, if you wanted to smoke it, yes, the wood chips have to be wet or damp, but they should not just be sitting in water. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so we got it rolled. Got it right here. Now you can add a little seasoning just to top it off. There we go. At the very least, you should have put the meat on the top rack, so that way the steam, or the smoke, as Jack wants to call it, from the wood chips is rising up and enveloping the meat. At this point, you just have your meat log sitting next to a steaming tray of wood chips. It's been on for a little, almost two hours and 45 minutes, so let's uh, check the inside temperature here. It's supposed to be 165. Yeah, it looks like it's at 165. All right. It's good to take it off. This looks absolutely perfect. Whoa, Nelly. I cannot tell if it is just the extra seasoning that he added to it, or if that bacon is two degrees away from being charcoal. If you like dark, like super crispy bacon, that's fine, but this is almost a solid color. But I can't cut it yet. You know why? Because the rule is anytime you cook meat, you gotta let it set. If I cut it, all the steam's gonna come out, it's not gonna turn back into juice, and it's not gonna stay in here. It's gonna dry out. 15 minutes minimum, let your meat set. Whether it's ribs, steak, turkey, I don't care what it is. When you pull it out, let it cool between 15 and 30 minutes. All right? And here we see Jack's 
I'm smarter than you, I know better than you chef skills on display. Yes, it can benefit you to let your meat rest for a few minutes after cooking in order to let those juices kind of marinate inside of the meat rather than cutting it and letting them immediately run out. But it's his tone of voice and the way he says it. He thinks you're stupid. He's reprimanding you for even possibly considering the idea of cutting your meat early without letting it rest. He knows that he's right, and he wants you to know that he's right, so he is aggressively informing you. Oh, one other thing. If you stab it with one of these things, don't pull it out. Trust me, if you pull it out, all the juice can come gushing out. So just leave it in there. And here is where we see that he's aggressively wrong. You know, again, he's telling you something that he this time perceives as fact and is treating you like an idiot for not knowing this. But put it, inserting a meat thermometer and taking it out, especially in one area like that where it's at the top, is not going to magically drain your meat of all the juice that's inside it. Don't be impatient. Yeah, Jack is one to talk to people about not being impatient. Be ready, because in a second I'm going to cut this bad boy open. Why did he sound so aggressive and mad when he said that? How could I have forgotten the most important process of this? This thing's still hot. I forgot to coat the outside with sauce. Okay, on a close-up, it doesn't look as dark. It looks... A lot better. It was probably just the angle combined with the lighting for that one shot. This looks nowhere near as bad as what it did when we were initially presented with the end result. Now we're not going to use a lot of sauce, but you're just going to, just for a presentation, what am I thinking? That's that right there. Look at that. Hold it like this and cut right in the middle. I was going to ask why is Jack using a spatula to hold it down instead of, like, a fork? Yet, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. If he used a fork, just like the meat thermometer, he'd risk the chance of all the juices running out of the four holes that he poked into it. Okay, here we go. Now, if you know Jack, and I'm guessing that a lot of you do at this point, if you're familiar as I am with Jack's ability to cook meat, I am scared to see what this looks like when he opens it. Because Jack's track record with fully cooking meat is not a good one. See, it's still steaming. I should have let it sit a little longer, but I, I just can't wait. What was that you just said about being impatient, Jack? Make sure it cuts all the way through. All right. Let's tip that bad boy right there. And tip that right there. And you can see, look at that. The Italian pork sausage. How is that possible, Jack? How did you cook the meat on the inside? and brown the outside of the bacon, yet somehow there are still very visible white caps of unrendered fat on the outside bacon weave. I'm just astounded at how he could possibly pull that off. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe the pork is just... Wait, no. No, because there's still pink sausage around the edge as well. What? How do you... How did you do that? Wrapped in bacon. Look at that. Crispy bacon on the inside. Gush and sauce. Seasoning. You can even see some of the hot peppers. Red peppers I put in there. When the flying goose did he put in red peppers? Oh, he put in red pepper flakes. That's right. That is going to be delicious. Oh, my goodness. That's a work of art, isn't it? Maybe it's the juices that are making it look more pink, but I can't be sure. And if it is not, I'm... Somebody has to give this man an award for somehow reaching the proper internal temperature, but somehow not cooking the outside meat properly. Look at this. Okay, so this is how I would serve this. I would, I'd have this on a plate like this. I'd get some like mashed potatoes and a green, some green beans or broccoli or something. Nice, well-balanced. Okay, because that, that that's what 
this meal needs to accompany it is something healthy like green beans or broccoli because that's going to offset everything that's in this delectable heart attack of a dish. I wonder what flavors I'm going to taste first when I try this because there's so many in here. There's seasoning, there's uh, red, cracked red pepper, cracked black pepper barbecue sauce the flavor i'm sure you're going to taste first when you try it jack is pork considering it's italian sausage bacon and more bacon <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah the barbecue sauce is coming through oh of course his sauce is the first thing that he's going to taste because it, it it's such a standout sauce that it's the first thing that contacts your taste buds that's a lot of bacon flavor in my mouth i wonder why unbelievable uh oh I'm sorry had to get it going again <laughs> it's a heart attack on a plate considering jack is currently recovering in the hospital from his what fourth stroke now i don't know if that joke is even more hilarious now or if it is so incredibly poorly timed that i just chose to watch this video it's bacon explosion check it out go to my blog for the link i have uh that will take you to how to make this okay and we will see you on episode 51 the next cooking with jack you guys take care leave it to jack to always leave on well, it's not a high note, but it's not a low note. A very average note. Just like how I end my videos. And that's going to do it for this video. Thanks y'all for watching. Be sure to leave a comment and subscribe. Let me know any other Jack videos that you'd want to see or any other channels I should take a look at. As always, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around. And I hope to see y'all next time. See ya.